good morning all of you so today's topic is growth pole theory so who gave this growth pole theory the growth pole theory was given by this person that is francis perox or francois perox which was given in this year so he this person was a french person who gave this theory of growth pole so you are seeing over here two words that is one is growth and one is pole all of you are aware that what is a growth and what is a pole so poles are what poles are centers now we will see what what centers etc these things we will uh, we will be seeing in the next slides now for the growth pole there are certain assumptions for the growth pole there are certain assumptions what are the assumptions the assumptions are that that human activities must cluster together to generate internal and external economies of sale so human activities means obviously economic activities so there must be clustering of economic activities or human activities when there is a cluster of human activities or economic activities those activities which lead, lead to certain internal or external economies we will see what are external economies etc so if clustering is allowed that will lead to various kinds of socio socio economic development then this will lead to the certain autonomous process and these autonomous process there might be certain special imbalance and because of some policy interventions etc there will be some growth foci uh, will be developed now this growth foci is also very important because if there is no nucleus there is no growth nuclei then there won't be any development so this growth foci or growth nucleus means economic so when we are speaking of growth pole development or growth pole theory there are certain terms that you must understand first term is the theory in itself the growth pole theory what is a growth pole theory it says this is a definition the core idea of the growth pole theory is that economic development or growth this is not uniform over an entire region but where this takes place this takes place place around some specific points those specific points are called growth pole so if there is a region so in that region there is some economic development according to growth pole then there won't be economic development or economic growth throughout the entire region in that region there will be certain specific areas those specific areas are called poles there will be certain specific areas specific poles of development and depending upon those poles upon those growth poles the region will be developing now what is a growth pole then according to growth pole theory a growth pole is very important without the existence of growth pole that region cannot develop so that leads us to the idea that what is a growth pole now this person budevel he defined that growth poles are what they are certain central locations they are central locations of some in economic activities so they in those central positions central places in those locations what happens there are a set of expanding industries these industries are located in that specific region and because of these industries because of this expanding industries because of this expanding industries what happens these leads to further development of that region again i am saying what is a growth pole so growth pole are certain specific regions are certain specific regions or specific locations within a region there are certain specific locations within a region where economic activity takes place now these regions what sort of economic activities there will be certain expanding industries certain innovative industries because of this innovative industries because of this expanding industries what will occur that will lead to further development throughout this zone further what sort of development obviously further economic development throughout the zone and because there will be further development throughout the zone so that means 
growth which had started only in one point that is one central place only in one point that because of development that will spread to its surrounding areas so that is how because of growth pole the entire region develops so first one location develops because of its expanding industries the spread occurs uh, outside that location surrounding that place and when that occurs then the whole region develops so for a single growth pole the whole region develops now what are clusters clusters are what these are again places where there are a number of interconnected companies or interconnected firms or interconnected institutions of a particular industry so that is called cluster so uh, in cluster again what is a cluster like for example the special economic zones so over there in a cluster you will find various a cluster of firms a cluster of inter interconnected companies so that is a cluster now perox he based his theory on three important cornerstones on three important uh, factors the first being he based it on computer's theory of the role of innovation first was the role of innovation that is one cornerstone second is inter industrial linkages and interdependence that is the second one and third is external economies now what are these now the first is the role of innovations according to perox this development occurs because of what discontinuous spurts now discontinuous spurts means suddenly there might be certain innovative industry that is called discontinuous spurts it is not a continuous one that okay in zone a it has some some industries have developed so that means in zone b also it will be developing in zone c also it will be de developing it is not a continuous spurts sudden development maybe only in zone c it has developed within a region if we divide that region into various zones so maybe it has developed only in one particular uh, zone so that is called discontinuous spurts spurts means sudden now this discontinuous spurts these are because of what because of some innovative entrepreneur maybe that entrepreneur because of his inventions because of his innovative ideas where there were non industries because of this innovative entrepreneur he decides that okay i will be developing because of my innovativeness because of my innovative idea or maybe because of my innovative capital uh, that i will be developing this kind of factory over here so this results this uh, the role of innovations because of some innovative entrepreneur if he decides that okay in such and such zone i will be having one industry so that means some suddenly that industry has occurred so that is spurt and this is not a this uh, not a continuous that that entrepreneur or that group of entrepreneurs do not decide that i will have it also in the abc the other zones also so this occurs because of discontinuous spurts by innovative entrepreneur now these are very important linkages the forward linkage and backward linkage now what do we mean by a forward linkage and a backward linkage now over here the exam the definition has been given in backward linkage an industry encourages in uh, investment in the earlier stages of production and in case of a forward uh, linkage an industry encourages investment in the subsequent stages of production now let me explain this with an example for example in a uh, this uh, backward linkage in backward linkage for example the automobile industry now what it says in a backward linkage an industry encourages investment in the earlier stages of production so in an automobile industry for example tata motors or any any such cars car making industry now supposing there is a car making industry somewhere so a car does not just come out of the blue it has to be the various parts has to be manufactured so if there is a car making industry if there is an automobile industry that will lead investment in the form of various other small firms in that region because those the by the product of those will be the raw material of the car for example a car requires what tires a car will require steel bodies a car will require various uh, engines 
various other parts so an automobile industry do not make the tires the automobile industry um, that is one single firm making uh, having automobile uh, firm they do not make the various steel uh, steel bodies they can just assemble them so that means if there is an automobile industry that will require various other industries in that region which will provide them in the earlier stages which will provide them with the raw material so their end product in the earlier stages of production so the tire company's end product that is a tire will be the raw material for this uh, industry for this main industry over there for example what i have taken automobile industry so the steel forms end product will be the raw material for this automobile industry similarly for example designer clothes industry so a designer clothes industry they will be taking the various uh, the textiles and then they will be making but they won't be weaving the textiles so weaving the textiles so if there is an uh, there is one uh, out of this thing uh, what is a cotton industry designer clothes industry so for that designer clothes industry there should be some other firms near that and those firms will be in the for the earlier stages of production so one uh, designer clothes industry will make backward linkages in the form of there will be establishment of other textile uh, industries over there the various weaving industries over there so automatically they will uh, come and settle over there because their end product will be they will have the market in that designer clothes so i hope this backward linkage is clear now regarding forward linkage for example if there is one plastic industry so this plastic industry is there because of some innovative entrepreneur some plastic in, uh, industry has been developed now how this will encourage investment in the subsequent stage of production now this plastic industries end product will be the raw material for various other subsequent industries for example toys so some toy industry will be developing in that region because they will very easily get the raw material from this plastic industry or for example the various uh, buckets mugs etc these kinds of firms they will be also developing because they can very easily get uh, the buyer the raw material from this main industry so that is forward linkage so certain industry will require after it has been set for raw material some industries will be uh, developing and for some industry their by uh, product end product will be the raw material for subsequent stages of production so that will lead to some uh, industries being developed in that region so forward linkage and backward linkage is very much important for perox development of the economic space and what is important obviously poles growth poles or growth foci is also very much important because without that there won't be any sort of centripetal forces or centrifugal forces so because of the centripetal forces Uh, if there are poles or foci then various other economic forces will be attracted to that region now he had some hypothesis as you are seeing over here so for perox for him one of the basic uh, objectives of perox hypothesis was that he advanced a dynamic theory of economic growth so this dynamic theory of economic growth this takes into a uh, uh, like taking the concept of the various innovative firms which i have told you as at the very at the starting points so uh, to him the large economic units are innovative not the small ones the large economic units are innovative and these economic units these firms they exert an influence through the various linkages which i just told you and these units they form a nucleus when they form a nucleus then other industries will also cluster towards it and then it will become a growth pole the whole uh, these clusters and the nucleus they will become a growth pole and then they will have a determining influence over the industrial environment i will show you over here through this diagram now see first there was only this industry key industry only this industry now this industry maybe through uh, back linkages or forward linkages various other industries has developed in this region maybe through back 
backward linkage or through forward linkage, which I have just explained to you. So various other link industry develops. So you see this entire region now is becoming an industrial cluster. So this entire region is now becoming a growth pole. Now, when this is becoming a growth pole, then this will lead to some secondary industries. Like over here, some secondary industries will be developed. Once this has developed, so this uh, the main thing has developed, the main key industry, and surrounding the main key industries, various other small linked industries, the circular uh, shapes, they have developed. Now, based upon these, that is the very the small uh, the key industries and the linked industries certain secondary industries develop for example i just told you uh, maybe some toy industry now the toy industry or maybe uh, plastic industry has developed so based upon plastic industry some plastic sheet making industry is developing now the plastic sheet making industry has developed now some secondary industry will be developing maybe uh, this uh, uh, toy making industry now for that toy making industry, maybe some other linked industries will be developing. For example, the various parts of the toys. Now in a toy industry, not every part is made of plastic. There are various parts which are not made of plastic. So maybe to cater to that plastic industry or toy making industry, various other these squares, uh, the, the light blue squares they develop, maybe they are catering to this toy industry over here because of the various parts just the, uh, that I told. So you see which was a small growth pole. Now this growth pole is becoming a huge growth pole and not only that, this results into a secondary growth pole. So some people who are not maybe they are having a uh, place over here, they may start an industry a bit away, not very far, a bit away. And then that growth pole will also lead to some other linked industries. So earlier where there was none, now this entire region now is becoming industrialized and or uh, there is economic growth. So this is how through growth pole that region develops. Now there are, what do we mean by a dynamic, a firm and an industry? You must understand the difference between firm and an industry. When we speak of a firm, that means it refers to a single production unit, but maybe whatever it is producing. But, uh, and its main objective is what? It is to earn profit. But what do we mean by industry? This means a group of firms, which, can, which will be producing the same product. So for example, Tata Motors is a firm under automobile industry. So I hope the different firm and industry is clear. So there are certain characteristics of firm and industry, both of which are required for this, uh, for a growth pole to develop. So you can see over here the characteristics which has been uh, uh, given over here. And then the certain linkages are required. So I have already told you what are the various types of linkages. Now, uh, the transmission of forward linkages are very much important because of these forward linkages, because of the innovations, what will happen? The cost of production will uh, decline. So, for example, I'm giving you a very uh, basic example why cost of uh, in this, uh, production will decline. For example, earlier there were only one industry. So to get the raw material, maybe that entrepreneur uh, had to take the raw material from quite a distance, maybe from here. So the uh, entire transportation cost from here to here would have been borne by this single person. But now with the development of all these various kinds of uh, other industries, now this transportation cost will be easily divided among the various other people also. Labor cost also. First, maybe labor would have to come from here to here. Maybe he would demand a much more salary. But now that more industries have come up, so people will be, laborers will be uh, trying to settle somewhere over here. So the labor cost will also be reduced. So that is how, because of agglomeration, because of innovations, the uh, cost falls. When the cost falls, then obviously the price will also fall. So when the price will fall, more goods will be um, uh, produced. 
So if this happens, the demand for the uh, industry's goods will increase. So with all these things, that region will be developing much more. Now this is uh, the place where the expanding or the propulsive or dominating industries are located. Those becomes the poles of the region and where the agglomeration tendencies occurs. Now I have already told you about this earlier that two things are required, dynamic firm and leading propulsive industry. And these three basic cornerstones are required for this growth pole, growth pole theory. Now we have been uh, hearing about external economies, etc. So what do we mean by this e economies? Now, when we speak about this, there are certain types of economies. First is economies internal to the firm, external to the firm, but internal to the industry and external to the industry, but internal to the urban area. So those economies which are internal to the firm means maybe that only that particular firm, only those economies which are uh, involved, which are related to that particular firm. Again, I take the example of Tata Motors and automobile industry. So maybe only the economies which are internal to Tata Motors, maybe that might be uh, electricity charges for that particular industry, or maybe uh, some other, uh, uh, maybe organizational efficiency or effectiveness. So maybe because of these, maybe they have got very good uh, laborers, very skilled laborers, that particular firm has employed very good uh, skilled laborers. So the, because of them, the cost of production reduces. But that does not make, that does not mean that, or maybe they are using uh, not so good uh, by um, not so good products. That is the raw material that they're using. Maybe they're not using not so good raw materials. So when they're not using good raw materials, then obviously, or maybe not good engine, then obviously what will uh, occur there, the, the cost of production will obviously be reduced. But that cost of production, which has been reduced, that is only for this firm, not for the entire industry. So there are certain economies which are external to the firm, that is, which are not related to the firm, but internal to the entire industry. So over here industry, maybe the textile units or the match factories at Sivakashi, etc. So again, maybe because of uh, like I had given you the example in the previous slide, when the industries are located close to each other, then various uh, cost of uh, production, various rises, like I told you about the transportation cost that will, uh, that will decrease. So when the uh, transportation cost decreases for the raw materials to be, uh, to come to that place or the end product to go from that place. So in Coimbatore, there are, uh, these clusters are there where there are only textile units or in Ahmedabad also there are clusters of textile units. So in Sivakasi, in Tamil Nadu, there are the match factories. There are various match, match factories or fireworks factories in Sivakasi. So if there are, that is not for the single, when the textile units, all the textile units are benefiting. Of uh, maybe from production, lower production cost, maybe because of transportation, or maybe because of maybe the government has announced that uh, some rebates. So the government does not announce rebates only for a single firm. The government will announce rebates for the entire industry. So the entire industry will be benefited for that. Not only a single firm, but the entire industry will be benefited. There are certain uh, economies which are external to the industry, but internal to the urban area. So like, for example, large market. So when there are larger market, then the industry not only will be benefited, but the not only that particular industry, but the other industries will also be benefited. So that is not if there is a larger market is there, is the labor market also increases, that will result into an economy for the entire urban area because not only that industry but all the other industries which also be benefited now this uh, map uh, this diagram is very important see over here first a uh, new industry is introduced or an existing in the firm they it is expanded now what will be the result the result will be it will create more jobs etc more infrastructure will be there now, when there will be more jobs, more infrastructure, that will result into an improved pool of trained labor. Now, that will uh, result into an increased demand 
because when labor will be there so with the labor their families will also be there so what will that result to that will result to this increased demand in the service sector now when laborers are there their families have also come these extra uh, economic activities have also taken place so that will result to an increased population more people will be coming to that uh, region so that will result to more local wealth generation of more local wealth that will result to more taxes people giving income taxes or people spending their money to in various activities etc that will result to construction of more activity and more uh, growth in the tertiary sectors that is for example banking sector is a tertiary sector uh, education sector is a tertiary sector so that will result to the growth in the tertiary sector so you see that because of the uh, expansion of new industry all these things happens so the tertiary sector also gets uh, developed so this makes that region becomes a growth pole and that also results to what when it becomes a growth pole that will result to more innovations and more inventions and that will result to again this and that will also result to when there is more invention and innovation that will result to more linked industries will come to that region and that will result into two things first there will be backward and forward linkages and there will be creation of more jobs and again this circle will go on so a single industry a new industry or the expansion of a single firm will lead to all these things ultimately becoming to a growth pole so this is how that region will develop now what is its applicability applicability is that this region through the growth pole we see that how that through the dynamic industry through the various polarization through the agglomeration etc how we see that if we carefully actually if we carefully plan the public investment program so this will result into a favorable location and that will result into a spread maximum spread of the regional growth because of through all these things through spread effect through polarization agglomeration etc so that will result to maximum growth of the regional uh, through the regional growth also through this what happens that the structural imbalance because some regions will be developing some regions might not develop so this would result into a structural imbalance for the whole region then then this will also result to what concentration of investment in a few selected points not in the whole region in a few selected points and because of this there will be developing a imbalance a specific imbalance will be developing now crit criticism is that inapplicability it cannot be applied in throughout in each and every region it is not possible to uh, that the, through this various kinds of regional problems can be just uh, we can uh, do away with the various kinds of regional uh, regional process like for example in resource rich region well populated but socially and economically backward regions this policy was not a, a success so visakhapatnam core uh, visakhapatnam port which is a well known shipyard it could have been a growth pole but we are seeing that visakhapatnam port it could not develop itself satisfactory or visakhapatnam could not develop itself most uh, such in such a satisfactory way or for example durgapur or jamshedpur only that particular area where durgapur or jamshedpur is located only that region could be developed but whole of jamshedpur whole of durgapur could not be developed and this also results into certain urban and economic industrial bias there is some functional rigidity also which occurs because over here the emphasis the uh, is given on productive activities and economic opportunities which are created but actually growth pole must function as central places it must function as growth promoting centers and social interaction points which we fail to see so you are seeing over here that the growth pole theory they are explaining about the impact of the various uh, pro propulsive industries or about the various linkages how regional economic development will occur when there are various linkages uh, because of various innovative entrepreneurs etc etc but this does not explain that where this for regional poles will be located 
what are the best places for the uh, location of this functional poles or what are the most likely locations of the new poles so though it does not explain it just explains that regional growth poles are required and regional for this regional growth poles whatever are required regional uh, growth poles when a regional growth pole has has been developed then these are the uh, aspects that will be occurring and through that the entire region will be developing but the regional growth pole theory never says that these are the likely areas of new poles they never say that these are the these are the place where it should develop where the functional pole should develop so for that it has to rely on central place theory so these are the uh, these are the various criticisms of uh, growth pole theory and uh, and about the entire growth pole theory